You know, when you have a, see a beautiful, brilliant painting, all the vivid colors, that's what we're attracted to, right? Mm -hmm. But the shadows, the dark places are what give it depth and perspective. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the dark places, the hard times, the warfare, you don't, the vibrancy never comes out. It, it's just a wash. So, uh, so you have to be prepared for that. And, and you do, it's really important for you to get a company of people around you. Uh, in my writing seminars, I will ask people, okay, first of all, who do you need on board with you? Who, who needs to be by your side through this journey? And who is in your life that if they're not on board with you, if they're against you, is going to make this a real, a real battle? Mm -hmm. So it is important to have some folks around you. And uh, I don't suggest that everywhere you go, you tell everyone that you're writing and publishing because too many people will come against you with just little negative comments or uh, trying to prepare you so you won't have your hopes up too high. Or, and all that stuff sticks in your brain and it's like it grows. So I would say find yourself a little company. I recommend uh, even when we do our Release the Writer events, I get those people to get in a private Release the Writer faith, face group so that as they're writing, they're encouraging each other. Uh, mm -hmm. So they can get and share, oh, this is falling apart. You know, Things happen to your technology. People's computers have shut down and oh, yeah. whatever, anything that can happen that will just put little roadblocks in front of you while you're mm -hmm. on the way to that. It's because the enemy knows the level of overcome. Uh, like in North Korea or somewhere, you know, where, the, where they have barbed wire and fences and dogs and machine guns and guards in the tower, okay? Well, if you're 50 miles from the border, those guards... They don't care about you. They're not focused on you. They're not targeting you. If you start to get close to the border to freedom, that's when they break loose. That's when all hell breaks loose against you, right when you're at the border of leaving your land into the free land. So as you're starting to write and publish, you're getting real close to breaking through a barrier, and that enemy turns that searchlight on, starts looking for you, letting the dogs bark, lets you hear the click the guns. Okay, but I'm telling you, you already have one. You just keep your face forward, uh, set like a flint, and you just run because that border is yours. That breakthrough is yours. I don't care what you hear in the background. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. All those who rise against you will fall. You will break through. You will cross over. Amen. Amen. Wow. I just feel, ah, I just feel the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I feel the power of the Holy Spirit on this. Um, and I'm telling you, people are going to be slammed when they actually watch this because I can feel the power of the Holy Spirit in such an intense way uh, because he wanted this. He wanted this out. He wanted, uh, it, it's really important. And what you've shared, the, the, the different uh, perspectives that you've shared, um, you know, and the different nuggets of truth and the way that, you know, what, what you've um, helped us understand uh, is very, very unique. So I just want to thank you for that. That's, that's pretty awesome. So uh, you have written books. <laughs> yes. And in your book, which you talked about a little bit earlier, Intentionality, you talk about the concept of intentional neglect and how it changed your life. What is intentional neglect and how will it help our audience, Wendy? Yeah, so first of all, it sounds odd, right? It sounds like an oxymoron, intentional yes. neglect. <laughs> So, so it's not from a negative perspective. It's like when I, when I wake up in the morning, a lot of us wake up in the morning or wherever and we make a little to-do list, all the things we want to get done, okay? And then life knocks us off and, and out of the 10 things, we might get two done or we might get 10 completely different things done and never get to the ones on our list. Okay, so when I first get up in the morning, I'm in my office. Not only do I make a, there's what I, my day looks like to get done. I also make a list Here's what gets none of my attention, no matter how loudly it shouts at me. Mm -hmm. These are the phone calls that will not get through. These are the situations that I will not give any time, focus, or attention to, no matter, because, uh, so, so I, I intentionally neglect things that I know that are going to suck away my purpose, my joy, what has to be done. And some of those things might be important, and they will at some point be on my to-do list, but you know, we all have time stealers, time suckers. So, you know, intentional neglect might for some people mean, okay, 
I will not open, I will not touch Facebook, I will not touch social media until I've accomplished these things. Because the next thing you go, you go somewhere and then like it turns into waste the whole day.com. You never meant for it to. You have to, you have to neglect it intentionally. So, so when it comes to writing, people getting things done, branding, whatever a big goal is, like you might have to put some things intentionally on the back burner. It yeah. isn't that you don't, you say no forever, but you might have to say no for now. Even something as wonderful as like a women's Bible study or I'm teaching Sunday school. Okay, well, if I have a goal like writing a book, I might have to on purpose for a season, pull that women's Bible study to the back burner and push the accomplishment of a goal to the front burner. And I intentionally neglect this, not forever. I communicate with the people around me, so I haven't just disappeared. But it's me deciding what gets my attention, but more importantly, what doesn't. What gets my energy, what doesn't. What gets my resources, what doesn't. And I constantly reevaluate that. And it really changed my life to not just let life push me around. Yeah. To, you know, I've already got a goal. I've set appointments with myself. So when the phone call comes, hey, there's a bake seal for your son's band. Can you make brownies? You know what? I'm so sorry. I have something on my calendar that prevents that. Whereas in the past, well, of course, I have to bake brownies. Then I spend, what, two hours? You go to the store, you make the run, yeah. and you've derailed your whole day. Yeah, so I can absolutely. say no to things without guilt because I've chosen in advance what I'm going to say no to and what I'm going to say yes to. So uh, that's one of the chapters in the book, and I get such feedback. Like It was such an a liberating, freeing, eye-opening, ah, I took control of my life. Yeah, yeah, no, that's it. That's very, very important, understanding our priorities because distractions can come and they can come through any form or, uh, you know, a, a, any form, you know, through your family, uh, yeah. through, through uh, other people, through, uh, you know, the evil, whatever. But I think that if you are intentional, um, which is the word for today, guys, right. intentional, <laughs> intentional on purpose. <laughs> That's right. what I'm hearing, you know, be intentional on purpose. If you right. need to have a life that God has called you to have, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, are uh, being intentional. And let me tell you something about that. I, I, I understand where Wendy's coming from. And sometimes People are going to misunderstand your intentionality. Right. That's true. <laughs> when you start getting intentional about your time because you value your time because, uh, because God values time and because you have, uh, you know, something important, you know, that God has called you to do. You're not putting significance on my time is important or I'm busy or I'm this and that, but you're giving importance to your call and, and even God would respect that God is not a God of confusion. He's very, very organized. In fact, Correct. Uh, we know that throughout the Bible. So you are going to be misunderstood. Uh, I know that uh, that has happened a couple of times, you know, even in my life, if people have thought, you know, oh, you know, well, now she's doing this. So, yes. you know, and, and then there's a part of you that doesn't want people to misunderstand you because you're right. Christian and you, and you love people. And, you know, that's the whole point, you know, uh, of your call is to your purpose is not for you. Uh, it's a catalyst to what God wants you to do for somebody else. You know, your purpose is to help others right? Um, and find their purpose, you know, right. uh, that's what I believe in. So in doing that, uh, sometimes in being intentional, uh, I, I have found personally, Wendy, that uh, people do, uh, wonder like what's going on or you know um, even when i started the show voice of truth prophetic tv things got so busy and they continue to get busy as we expand and uh, and i still love everyone i i'm i'm not changed i'm still the same person yes. uh, it's just that my priorities have changed and they are priorities for god not even for myself it, they're for god right. you know, the passion is for god um but uh, so don't feel guilty guys i want to tell you guys this yeah you know, don't feel guilty. Of course, be balanced because you, you can't be just working, working, working and doing nothing else. You got to, you know, have time for your family. You got to have time for your friends. And well, you know, listen, time, sometimes right? intentional neglect. Sometimes yeah. I intentionally neglect my office in yes. order to focus on my family. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and I don't let that office come into that time that I've set aside to be fully present with my family. So it's, yeah. uh, it isn't just about work. I, I love what you said, you know, uh, one, I believe our purpose has very little to do with us. Mm -hmm. The Western American view of 
mm-hmm. purpose and destiny is making me happy and fully alive. Yeah, the North well, American dream. <laughs> that's a byproduct. Being yeah. happy and fully alive is a byproduct. Yeah. The purpose of God, you, you were created, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and mind, love your neighbor as yourself. It sums up love God, love people. That's, that sums up to all of our purpose. And if you want to take it a step further, that through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. Those three things, that's our purpose. Through you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So everything I do, it's really not about me. Mm-hmm. My purpose has very little to do with me. My destiny yeah. is not a self-centered, selfish issue. Uh, mm-hmm. If I'm a surgeon and I'm out there and I've got a guy with a broken arm, he's in pain, he's screaming for my attention. But I've got a guy over here who had trauma to the brain, gray matter spilling out. The guy with the broken arm is mad at me because I'm not attending to his knees right now and he's in pain. But the guy with the brain matter spilling, that's who God sent me to. I'm going after the brain matter. Hang on. I'll be with you in a moment. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of like there's this, this Holy Ghost triage we must do. Where did he send me? When Jesus walked the earth, he said, I only do what, what the, the Father sent me to do. I only say what I've heard the Father yeah. say. Absolutely. And so the enemy of great is good. The enemy of excellence is mediocre. The enemy of, of uh, well done is uh, just enough. Yeah. So, so for all of us, I think, and again, that takes intentionality because if I'm just walking and I'm not paying attention, I'm going to hear the guy with the broken arm. I'm going to go meet his knee and I'm going to feel so good about myself. We're going to have a fan club. He's going to share on Facebook how <laughs> great I am. And this guy died. Yeah. Because, because I didn't, I wasn't willing to practice intentional neglect, get out of my own way. And I probably, this guy might die anyway, if I attend him, I, I don't know. So, so there's something about purpose and destiny. I want to convince everyone, listen, your purpose is not really about you. Your purpose is about him. Mm-hmm. Love God, love people. It comes down to that simple recipe. Yeah. Love God, very simple. Love <laughs> very, it is simple. very simple. Yeah. Very and simple. I think uh, here's the thing that uh, another thing that I, that I've experienced in my life is that when you focus on other people's purpose, God you know, there's this principle in life is you sow what you reap. <laughs> when you start sowing into people's life, because you're doing it for God, not because you're doing it for that person. I have seen this happen so many times in my life where sometimes even the person that I'm sowing in may not necessarily be my best friend or I might not even want to, but out of obedience, God will say, you need to do that. And you need to do that now. And I, uh, <laughs> you know, I, he gets my attention and I have seen that every single time my Facebook family and friends, every single time you sow into somebody, it may not, you, you, you may not see it at that moment, That's but right. I can promise you that that thing is coming back to you, pressed down, shaken over and given into you uh, through some, you know, shape, form or fashion, if it's not even that person himself. So, you know, God does keep an account of our tears. He does keep an account and he, he does water. He's a rewarder of faith, you know? So he yes. says, I'm a rewarder. Seek me and I will reward you. So right. don't be guilty about, you know, getting too righteous here and saying, oh, you know what? I'm just going to stay humble and I'll just do everything. And God, you know, it's all okay. God loves you and he wants to reward you intentionally as well. Absolutely. So, so yeah, so we don't need to feel guilty about enjoying the fruits of what God is giving us because we've been, you know, we've persevered and we've walked through the hard times and he's walked with us and we've crossed over one level and he right. says, well done, well done, <laughs> you know, right. enjoy Absolutely. the authority in this level now and enjoy the fruits that you're going to, don't feel guilty about that, you know, enjoy that. So, you know, I really want to talk about, um, so uh, Wendy's book, because I think this is going to be uh, really life changing for those people that want to, uh, you know, uh, just delve more into you know, really, I feel uh, my sense is changing your mindset in order yeah. to be successful, you know, as a Christian or to, to, in order to really get down to what God, you know, wants for you in your life. So I think that it's great. And just even from what she's been sharing all through, as I've said, I've never really, I've, I've had a lot of uh, conversations with other people and people in the church and people outside church, but um, this has made, uh, you know, so much sense and it's, uh, it's awesome. So if you want to try to, uh, get hold of Wendy's book, uh, you can go to her website. Uh, obviously you can also go to Amazon and, uh, pick it up over there. 
Um, Wendy, I want to talk a little bit more about, uh, just before we get ready to wrap up here, um, I just want to talk a little bit more about your coaching uh, course. Um, again, you can go to her website, Personal Branding Intentional. Uh, that is her website where you can actually go into these. So what, what, uh, what is the process for people to connect with you and how long is it? And, you know, let's just get uh, some, some um, uh, you know, some more information for people who would want to connect with you. Of course, of course. Well, like you said, if you, if you go to the website, just the wendykwalters.com, you can pretty much find everything from there. Okay. Um, because we do, uh, I do offer uh, writing courses. I have these intensive writing courses where people come out and, and learn how to craft their story and how to launch publish successfully. Like I say, we have so much success with people hitting number one in their Amazon category. That mm -hmm. takes intentionality. You don't just throw a book up there and that happens. There are some steps to do. So then we have that, uh, the personal branding. Um, obviously at this stage, I, I don't have the luxury of working one-on-one -on -one with everyone. So we took the time, we went into the studio, uh, and I have a full, um, DVD series. It's like, it's like personal coaching. I, I personally coach you through a segment and then you have this, uh, workbook that you go through and you take each module at the end of the course that kind of helps you layer down with your personal branding. What are your core values? What are you best at? Um, what do you, who are you, what do you have to offer? We talk about target markets and, and things like that. It's a really fun course. Um, so that's available DVD course that, that they can take. Um, same with the, the writing course is also available on DVD if you couldn't attend live. So all of those things are available. I do some personal coaching. Um, we obviously help a lot of authors through that process. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a writer and a ghost writer and an editor. Uh, mm -hmm. And I have connections to, to many editors, people in that field. And um, right there from the website, you would see one about publishing. So we have helped a lot of people publish and, and we're the right fit for some and we're not. I have mm -hmm. network of many people. I, it's not a, I'm not trying to drum up business. I have plenty of people to send you to and plug into to help you accomplish those goals. But, but yeah, really from the website, you could, you could send us a direct message. You'd be able to contact us, whatever it is you wanted to do. Um, and you can purchase books through the website or especially if you're not in the U S uh, straight from Amazon. So they ship to you, you know, it's in yeah. all the countries in the UK and Japan and Germany. It's all those countries. So Amazon's probably an easier yeah. way to get to it yes. when you're not in the U S. Yeah. Right. And is there a sort of a, a duration of when people would start? Do you encourage people to finish off in like a two months, three months, six months? For, for the branding process or for writing? For writing. So, so the thing is, uh, you know, writing is, it's, it's art, not science. All right. So the thing is, I like to encourage people like in the writing seminars, uh, we have a way where we kind of brainstorm through the whole process and get a, get a plan. Um, and, and that would be, I couldn't share it here in this tiny segment, but yeah. I teach people how to brainstorm, how to throw all the ideas out, how to organize right. those yeah. into a working. And I find a lot of people, once they've got that working outline, yeah, you kind of muscle through it very quickly. And yeah. I find a lot of people who have been trying to write a book for five years or 10 years, you know what, 90 days after they've been at the course, here's the manuscript, let's go. Yeah. Uh, t many testimonies of six months, nine months, one year, people who are have gone from zero to publish in that amount of time. Yeah. Uh, it, again, it takes focus and intentionality. And we kind of teach people what that process looks like. You put yourself on your calendar, you set weekly appointments with yourself. And you communicate that to your family, your friends, your church, your whoever, you, you, so you can kind of get through that process. So it doesn't have to take every, you do not need to take a month off work and go find a cabin and eat yogurt. <laughs> you know, that's not yeah. how it works. We live our life. Most of my books I've written, you know, waiting for my daughter to get out of orchestra rehearsal or on an airplane or, you know, yeah. when you have that plan, you'll find that you can write 250 to 500 words in a little segment. Right. Most books are like 35,000 to 50,000 words. <gasps> that sounds horrifying. Except when you answer an email, your average is 250 words is the That's average right. email answer. If you've written four emails, you've written a thousand words. Mm -hmm. A thousand words a day would get your manuscript done in how long? <laughs> 35 yeah. to 50 days. That's right. You write four emails every day. You probably could write you know, five or six paragraphs towards your book every day and you would have, so that's why it takes a little plan. Once you've got it, it's working backwards. I love to work backwards. 
Once yeah. you know where you're headed, you can just keep chipping away at it and it might not feel, oh, I've only got 30 minutes. So right. So write two paragraphs in 30 minutes, right? One paragraph, you, you start, and then momentum builds. And once you start seeing, ah, then you, then you start getting excited and you get right. involved. Yeah. And the next thing you know, you've, you've like blocked off, this Saturday is mine. I'm going to write today. And, and you, it's amazing. And I, same thing in the, in the groups. I'll see people kind of sharing their word counts, how far they got and where they got stuck. And, and sometimes you've written and you have to crumple it all up and go, okay, that was garbage. No problem. We'll start again. <laughs> It's, yes. okay. it's a process, but it doesn't need to take you years and years. You can get this done, guys. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's what people need to hear and understand, that they can do this, whether they're single moms, whether they're oh, yes. um, moms with young children. Yes. Whether, you know, if you, you can do it, you know, and that's why I brought Wendy here, because I wanted her to encourage you guys and to hear from her firsthand, you know, with her clients, you know, that it is not, brain science here you know everybody and anybody can do this so yeah um you know wendy uh, thank you so much for uh just being on the show today i think it's um it's been great uh it's there's so much of uh you know understanding and uh different perceptions as i've said and uh and a lot of uh, nuggets for people to take away and uh once again you can uh, connect with wendy through her website as well um and uh she also you can connect with her through her Facebook page, um, yeah. uh, Facebook Wendy K Walters Biz. Uh, she has a Twitter account, so uh, yeah, she's on social media, and you can definitely connect with her as you, as she has said before, through her website uh, by just leaving a message on there, and somebody would connect with you. So I would love for you to pray, yes, uh, <laughs> uh, because I know that you have conquered this realm. You've written. You're in this, you know, marketplace area to encourage people. And uh, I think it would be great for those who will be watching uh, for them to just be activated um, in this, you know, in this gifting and to be encouraged. So go ahead, Wendy. Please yes. Please. Hallelujah. So, Father, I just lift up this audience. Everyone who's watching, whether it's right now, the moment it's released, or maybe it's a rerun and it's been months or a year since it's been, right now, wherever they are, quicken this word to them. Mm -hmm. Let it go inside and let it spark something in them that they have a purpose greater than themselves, that you have called them for a unique and specific design. God, wake them up. Whatever it is, make them hungry to be in touch with the true the true you, the true you inside of them, that they would connect to the great I am and they would find who I am. This is who I am because I've connected so well. So Father, I speak an anointing. You've given me, you've given me the authority of author and finisher. So I release the anointing of author and finisher over this watching audience, that they can get the work done, that they can, they will overcome when they apply the blood of the lamb to the word of their testimony. And that level of overcoming will be greater than anything they have yet experienced. I thank you even now, just the seeds that are being planted and the level of victory and overcome that will be a result that will take literally months and years to unfold from this moment. And every time we step into our victory, we step into our overcoming, then we become light of the world. Then we become salt and people are attracted to us and drawn to us because we are living so fully connected and free and alive. So I release the favor of God on all those watching, the favor of God to take ownership of who they are. Take ownership. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. I hide no shadows. I honor every dark thing that's happened to me, every bit of trauma, every bit of abuse, every bad decision I've made, the whole train wreck of my life. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I surrender it to you. I know you will take it and break it and turn it into bread. I thank you that you're going to feed multitudes just from my little offering. God, here's my loaves and fish. Do with it what you will. So I thank you. I release the power of God in Jesus' name into your life. You are an author and a finisher. You are a child of God. You are a unique, unique son. You are a unique daughter, and he has big plans for you, baby. Big, big plans in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Whoa. Ha! Ah, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, I am I feel like I'm drunk in the Holy Spirit right now. <laughs> hopefully, I can, hopefully I can finish up strong. 
<laughs> lovely, lovely. Wow, wow. Amen, amen. Guys, you know, uh, this is going to be so amazing. Um, and, you know, we believe in you. We truly believe in you. God yeah. believes in you. Uh, you know, and, you know, our whole ministry is a ministry of taking the voice of the Father to nations. That's our mandate, you know, to, to know the heart of the Father, to, you know, to, to put your hand on the pulse and the agenda of what, you know, God is doing on the earth. Uh, like Wendy even says, and I say this many times, she didn't know, but I say this all the time on my program that, you know, Jesus, uh, you know, always said, I see what my Father's doing in heaven and I do that, you know. So, um, so much of alignment uh, and divine connection, Wendy. Uh, it's been an honor, true honor to have you on the program. You're a fire starter, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, just a, you know, a cracker for the Lord here. And, uh, so good to know you. So good to, uh, you know, have friendship and fellowship with you today here on the program. And uh, it's been amazing even for me, um, you know, at the very time that I'm at, uh, you know, getting ready here myself uh, to launch my testimony. So this has been very encouraging and uh, God never makes mistakes, guys. He never makes mistakes. Right. But at a point in time, uh, it doesn't matter what and who does what. At the end of the day, uh, if this is God's plan for you and with every intentionality, he will make sure that he gets you from point A to point B. And that's his, that's his faithfulness over your life, you know. Amen. So even if you made bad choices, you've gone in the wrong direction. At the end of the day, his will for you is sovereign. That's who we're serving, a sovereign God. That if he knows that you have made mistakes, you know, just by mistake, you know, and no, no real fault of your own, just, you know, lack of understanding or... Uh, about a situation or whatever it is don't be a bad don't say well you know i i don't know if i can do it now or maybe i'm 16 i don't know if i have a book or maybe i'm 17 i don't you know it's never too late that's right you know, I, I have a sermon series where i talk about day to dream and i think that you know god gave us uh you know this imagination he gave us our mind you know and we are made in the image of him and he is the greatest master creator yes. <laughs> And, yes, amen. And you know, and we have that in us, that DNA, as even Wendy was sharing. So, yeah, I I encourage you, both me and Wendy, encourage you today on the show to you know, as soon as you hear this, say, "Whoa, I'm going to go straight to my computer and I'm going to start writing." You know, uh, whatever God tells you to, and He'll inspire you. The Holy Spirit, believe me, when I finished my book and I read some of the chapters, and I gave my husband and my family, you know, just my immediate family. They were like, did you write this? Where did you get all this? I was like, I didn't. <laughs> I written it. I cooperated with God. And the Holy Spirit really, really does his part, you know, right. to right. inspire and to bring, you know, you read back and you think like, wait, wow, that's, that's good. <laughs> right. Right. So, anyway, guys, we are coming uh, in to just uh, wrap up this show. It's been great to have you, uh, Wendy, on Voice of Truth Prophetic TV. Thank um, you. And uh, we... Uh, who knows, maybe we will do uh, in the future, you know, some mentoring course together, you know, a webinar or something where, um, you know, we can partner together and do some kind of a boot camp. I'm, I'm kind of working with a lot of different people in the new year to do a lot of different kinds of boot camps. So, um, you know, I really felt like after we've sh you shared and, you know, we've talked that it would be really, really good for uh, some of the people in the new year future so yeah. we'll connect and guys so stay tuned stay, stay tuned. tuned for that <laughs> we're not done yet we're not done yet for sure uh so thank you so much my facebook family and friends love you we're so appreciative that you come and you listen to our podcast um you know week after week uh you know i will just we just continue to pray for you and pray for your journey in the lord and so i'm your host dr sandra wepler bidding you a fantastic week uh, I love you and so does the Father. Bye for now. Bye-bye.